Hello, good evening. Sunday evening to everyone. In my caption, you'll see how are you leading the next generation. And so as you guys know, I'm always talking about leveraging legacy and creating uh, generational wealth for those that are coming behind you, right? And so tonight I have my awesome son joining me. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Listen, guys, I asked him earlier in the week. I said, hey, come do a live with me. He said, no, nah, I won't be available until the weekend. So I am super duper excited to have him on here with me. You guys know I don't just jump on to be jumping on, but I come with, with great content and uh, things that you can actually walk away with, action items that you can actually walk away with and apply in your everyday life, right? And so we were just chatting before we got on and we were talking about leading by example. And so for me, it's always so important to lead by example because more is caught than taught, right? And so what do I mean by that? Kids, people, they're watching what you do, not what you say, right? And so for me, it's a, if that was an awesome segue into this live because who else is watching other than the kids? And so I'm gonna bring him in and just get his... Uh, <laughs> His thoughts on, uh, you know, what he's seen in my life, what he's taken and applied to his own life just as a result of watching my life. Now, none of this is scripted. It's all live. I don't have a clue what he's going to say. <laughs> so we, we just going we just going to go with God's flow. I know that it is not about me, but you guys to actually see and be able to touch that things are truly possible when you lead and guide you know, in, in, in the proper, in, in the proper areas. No, I have not did everything perfect. I know that, but I have did some great things in parenting my kids. And I'm just going to let him share where he is, where his heart is, what he's learned. And uh, we just going to grow with, we just going to go with the flow. So I'm going to uh, let you share your thoughts. How are you doing, everybody? <laughs> I look great on camera. Nice you do. Skin. You do. But um. We were just talking about leading it by example. And um, I want to say leading by example is extremely important, especially when it comes to your children, because they basically follow and, and see everything you do. And when you think they're not looking, they're looking. And when you think they're not paying attention, they are. And they, all their mannerisms or how they act, their character, a lot of that stuff comes from the parents. So leading by example is so important. So for example, um, my mom, you know, like she's in the business and she's in the fitness. Um, when I was younger, around, I want to say 16, 17, I started to become overweight. And this is around the time when she started to lose weight. Now, indirectly, she wasn't telling me like, hey, like, you know, you should start working out with me. She never like forced me to do anything. She never uh, tried to like uh, encourage me to do something I didn't want to do. So, but I will always see her like, you know, going to spin class every day. This is before she, she was teaching her own classes. I've always here going to spin classes, always going to work out every single day after work, all the time. So um, once I got to college, I noticed that I was becoming very overweight. I was around like 220 pounds, and I just made a decision to lose weight. It wasn't like my mom was like, hey, you should start losing weight, or you need to lose weight. It was more like, I see something in myself, like I'm, I'm not liking how I look, so let me start losing weight. And... It's not like I thought about my mom. It was probably more just indirectly seeing her made me want to be like, okay, I see her doing it. If she can do it, I can do it too. So that's one of the examples of her leading by example where I just wanted to lose weight, just seeing her. And yeah. yeah. And so that's good. And I just want to interject there because a lot of times when you guys get a breakthrough in something, you want to take and you want to throw that in on your children. You want to make them have the new revelation that you have and you have to allow them to grow into it on their own, right? You lead by example. And so my thing was that I am not going to change my food. Some of you guys, you, you, you get a new revelation of, you know, losing weight and then getting in shape and you want to be in control. And because you buy the food, you don't want to buy the food that you no longer bought. No, this is your new revelation. You got to allow them to have their revelation. And as long as you lead properly, they will follow. And so I just began to live a life of wellness and he began to see it. He began to embrace it. And like he said, indirectly, he began to do some things as a result of what he saw. Not me saying, listen, you need to lose weight. And now certainly that was my prayer because that's my prayer for not only my own household, 
but the people, the, the people that I see, the people whose lives that I influence is that they live a lifestyle of wellness. Because here's the thing, guys, skinny is not fit. Skinny is not in shape, right? Just because you're skinny doesn't mean you're in shape. I have a lot of clients that come to me that are skinny and they can't last five minutes in my class, right? So it's about leading by example because more is caught than taught. I guarantee you that you'll get more through to your children. And even for those that are leaders on your job, you'll get more through to the people that you lead by leading. Because here's the thing, leaders lead. Leaders don't complain. Leaders don't crack the whip. They lead, right? They get in the trenches and make things happen. So I'm really glad that he actually pointed that out to say, listen, it wasn't about what she said that made me change, but the life that she lived. And more importantly, the change that he saw. I was 271 pounds. He saw me going through that process, eating fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, french fries, doing whatever I want, just totally out of control. And then he also saw that shift of me going to the gym every day, of me no longer eating fried foods, of me eating more vegetables. He saw that shift. And as a result of him seeing the shift, he began to shift things on the inside of him. So guys, I want you to begin to lead, right? Not throw it down somebody's throat. Now that you've got this great revelation, whatever that new revelation is, for us right now, we're talking about fitness and wellness. Yours may be something different, but allow your kids to grow into their own, right? You lead the way. Yeah. We're listening and we're actually following what you guys are saying. We might not want to hear it or we might have an attitude or who the case may, may be, but there's been plenty of times I've told her, I'd be like, you remember two years ago you told me this? You know when I told you, when you told me this? I'd be like, that came up in my life or this happened. So we're always listening, even if it seems like we're not. So if you ever feel like, like he's just not listening or he, he's nonchalant or she's nonchalant, she, he just, he's ignoring me or whatever the case may be. Most of the time, we're listening. So Yeah, that's good stuff. That's real good stuff. And also, it goes back to your confidence and your relationship for me with God. Because here's the thing. A lot of times people have children and they worry about their children. Listen, I'm going to bed, right? If something is wrong, the mom is going to call me. Something is wrong, he's going to call me. Right. And so listen, you got to know that what you've instilled in your child is in there. It's in there because here's the thing, guys. If God can't keep him, I sure can. And so my, my, my belief, my love rests in God, that God, I'll put greatness on the inside of him. And I trust you. I trust you. A lot of you guys aren't trusting God. I trust you to lead the way. And you're not trusting your children. I trust that things that I'll put on the inside of him that he will grow up in, right? That he'll do what's right. And one thing for sure that I know about him is that he's a leader. If he does something, it's because he wants to do it, not because somebody pressured him into doing it. So listen. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm going to bed, guys. He's 21 years old. He's in his last year of college. Woo, 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 woo. He, uh, he's doing absolutely amazing. He's, uh, he's studying uh, information technology. Is that right? He has a full-time um, in paid internship. So he is on a great trajectory of just growing uh, in his life. But he's still 21 years old, right? He still want to go out and have fun. My only request for him is that I know where he is. I need to know where you are, right? Other than that, I'm going to bed. He'll come in here maybe 2 o'clock in the morning and I'm what? Sleep. I am not up worrying. I ain't sitting up looking at the door because I know that he's covered. He's covered. I have, I have prayed to God. I have covered him in prayer. I have instilled some things in him that he knows that when he's not supposed to be where he is or thinking about doing something that he's not supposed to do, that he doesn't. When he, what he just mentioned about me, me, me sharing with him and then he's experienced that was when he was in college, there were some things, some party, I'm sorry, when he was on campus, 
there were some things, some parties that he wanted to participate in. And he said that he would hear my voice. Listen, when you know that you have raised your children in the way they should go, you should be able to rest. You should be able to rest. And you guys aren't resting. Lead by example and you will rest. So what else? Y'all got any questions on here? Hey, cousin, I see James is on here. Y'all have any questions? Where, where are you guys? How do you raise your adult children, your young adult children? Are you still raising them like they're a teenager or a toddler? Like, listen, guys, I had to get some counsel. I had to read some books on how to transition from raising a kid, a teenager, and then a young adult. Like, it's different. You can't raise your young adult like you raised a teen. You got kids. Right, so you have to give them the same respect, the same honor that you would want for yourself. So how are you guys raising your kids? And then I'm gonna ask you that. How did I do with transitioning into the the the, the, the toddler, the teen, the young adult, and, the, and now the adult, you're 21. How did I do with that? And be full transparent, be, be transparent. Hey, Instagram, we looking at Facebook, we got Instagram going too. I feel like, around uh, around I want to say maybe elementary school to middle school um I feel like you did a, a good job in raising me as far as like putting me in the right situations the right schools stuff like that um as far as disciplining I always felt like when I was growing up I felt like um, it was more of me which it might have not been the best thing it was more of me being uh, afraid or scared versus having a respect so I'll be like, oh, I'm scared that she's going to beat me. That's why I don't want to do bad versus I respect my mother. That's why I don't want to do bad. Mm -hmm. so, like a reverence. Um, exactly. Yeah. So I, I would say as far as when I was growing up at that age, I was I'm, I wish, looking back, I wish it was more of I had a respect for her. That's why I don't want to do bad versus I just don't want to get that help. That's why I want to act right. Mm -hmm. um, once I got to high school, I feel like um, she slowly started to um, pull back as far as being a uh, What's the word? Over hovering, yeah, over, hovering, and yeah. Um, but I also felt like she was kind of too, too strict at times. But that could just be me being a kid and her being a mom. I was only sixteen or seventeen, so uh, that it that that was the case with that. Once I got to college, I, I felt like she, of course, slowly and like slowly and slowly started to pull back as far as like the strictness and stuff like that. I'm gonna say my first year of college, I lived on campus. She never was worried or was never like calling, like, what you doing? Have you been doing this? Have you been getting in trouble? I wouldn't talk to her for, you know, a week or two and then just call her, you know, check up on her. And she'd just be like, how you doing? How's school? She wouldn't be like, you getting in any trouble? You doing this? You doing that? She never asked any of that. Um, I would come home for weekends, you know, nothing would change. Um, but I want to say within the last year, it's been very, I feel like our relationship has grown a lot because she has just let me be me. Let me speak my mind. Let me grow. She's not, uh, you know, like, you know, what are you doing? Where, where are you going? She might, she wants to know where I'm at, but she's not always on my case. I tell her I'm going to school. I'm going to work. She's like, all right, have a good day. Like she said, I might come back late, whatever the case may be. But within the last year, she has been very great as far as, um, you know, pulling back and stuff like that. But as far as raising me overall, I feel like she did a great job. Um, but like I said, putting me in the right situations. I was in private school my whole life until high school. I feel like that definitely prepared me as far as academically for a lot of things. Um, when I transitioned to public school, that was a great transition. I needed that because it was a different environment. It was a different atmosphere and I needed that change of pace. So I feel like you did a great job overall. Yeah. And so let's just interject there. So he's, I had him in private school his entire life, but I knew that he needed a reality check. I did. And I didn't want him to get to college and have that reality check and then have some uh, culture shocks, if you would, in college, right? I felt like we could, you know, deal with the transition better in high school than we would in college. And so it was a big uh, decision for me with regards to responsibility to make that transition from private school, that safe haven, it's a small environment, to yeah, public to school. To reiterate, to reiterate. And I was like, no. Yeah. So. Yeah, because I think it's important to get your children involved, right, in the decisions. You're ultimately the decision maker. But I thought it was important. I, I feel like it, it's important to get your kids involved 
and the decisions of their life and, and not just guide them all the time, right? Because what works for you doesn't necessarily work for them, right? Because they're a completely whole different person. And so for me, transitioning him into public school, it was a transition for me as well as for him. Like every single day I would cover him, you know, in the uh, cover him under the blood of Jesus because he's coming from this very secure, safe environment to this huge, I don't even know what to call it, but I knew it was needed, right? And he went from being dropped off and picked up every day to having to catch public transportation. So not only did we have the transition of a whole new school, new environment, but also now getting on public transportation, because here's the thing, guys, I always knew once I had my children that I was raising the head of someone's household, right? I'm raising men. I'm not raising boys. I'm raising men. And so because I knew that, I knew that I had to make the proper transitions in certain areas, certain times of their lives so that they'll grow up and know how to transition in life as things happen, right? And so after after we went through that transition with high school, I went back and asked him, I said, did you feel like that was the right decision? And he said, most definitely, right? Because I felt like maybe he could have did things a little different because the first year in high school, his grades dropped. And I said, wait a minute, right? I've spent all this money in, in, in private education and then you go to public school and begin to fail. So it was really like um, uh, 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 like a culture shock for him that first year. He went. And it was a school so different. I'm coming from a school of 500 kids, and that's 500 kids from first grade to fourth grade mm -hmm. to go to a school of 4,000 kids, and that's just ninth to twelfth grade. So it was just it wasn't like the work was hard. I wasn't just I just wasn't focused on the work. I was just focused on having fun and making friends and fitting in. I'm 14 years old, coming from a different environment. So I was getting D's in classes and and C's and wasn't really doing that doing that well. And it wasn't like I didn't know the work. It was just like she said, a culture shock. So right. Crazy. But then you said like you said social, right? And yeah. wanting to fit in. It's a whole new environment. You come from an environment where being smart is cool exactly. to a new environment where being smart is not cool. Right. And so him, him trying, trying to figure that out. And so I asked him, was that a good decision? And, you know, he said, yeah, well, absolutely. It was a great decision. So, you know, again, guys, have the conversation with your children. Um, how, how, how are you transitioning, you know, wherever your children are or, or not even just your children. Some of you guys may not even have children, but those that look up to you. Right. I see a lot of times where people start off mentoring other people and they start off at a very, um, at a very babe stage, if you will, for lack of a better word. And as they grow in the mentoring, the mentor still treats, still treats them like a babe, and they're not. And so you have to transition as your mentees transition. And so how are you guys working even in that regard? Started out with saying your children, but if you don't have children, everybody is leading somebody, right? Everybody is, 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 has influence over somebody. So how are you handling that influence? So like for you, with your with with your friends, I think you do really well with influence, you know, of your friends. And so just share that a little bit, like the importance of being around people that's going where you're going or that's the or, or at a level where you want to be. Like that was that is one and still is. But from a very uh, very young age for them, I always prayed that they would be involved in relationships that had their best interests at heart, right? You guys need to be praying for your children. I even prayed for his wife at a, at, at a very, when he was very young, that he would he would have a wife that respects him, that honors him, that loves him, that cherishes him. Like, it's real, guys. And so now to see the fruits of my labor, I'm not surprised, but it's a blessing to see because ultimately he can make a decision to do what he want to do. Right, I'll have the conversation, but he still has the choice, right? And so for you, like, I, I, we will have conversations where he'll come and share with me about some things that have happened with friends and to get my opinion on something. And I can see that it's, it's very uh, close to his heart that his friends are always elevating, right? And not descending. And so just share that a bit. 
one thing that um they're going through is pressure and when it comes to my family, I'm gonna take care of them. And I think that's how I'm still looking at my family. I'm always wanting them to elevate, go to the next dimension, be be a great person overall, whether it's a great person in character or a great person in whatever they're passionate about. So I'm always on top of my friends. Like I have a friend who's in photography, and I'm always on top of him. Like you know, if you upload anything to your photography Instagram, you know he hasn't uploaded in months. I'm like, what are you doing? Like you know, you you messing around. You you not you not doing what you're supposed to. And my friends start to notice that. Like I had a friend recently who texted me. He, he texted me. It was like a, a message from someone else who had said something along the lines of, um, "What are you doing right now to make happen? What, what to make what you want to happen in the future?" He sent me a text and said, this sounds like you. Yeah. And I was like, definitely. Yeah. So I'm always, always trying to inspire my friends and always trying to make them be, or not make them, but encourage them to be great. Because I feel like that's very important. It's, I wouldn't want to be the friend who's, who's at the top or, or is on top of their game or is doing this. And then you have your peers who are still at level three and you're at level 10. Yeah. I don't feel like that's, that's, that's not how it's supposed to be. So if I can be that person, I can be that leader. I'm going to do that. And that if, like I said, if I consider my, someone my friend, I'm always, always on top of their case if I feel like they're not on top of their game. And I want them to do the same to me. So it's not like it's a one-way street. I'm not, you know, saying that I'm, I'm perfect or always am doing the best thing or the right thing. Mm-hmm. But me, me, me as a person, I'm always doing that for my friends. Always. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys, I see a lot of you guys are on here. I want to say hello to Mary, Maria, Robin, uh, Stephanie, Cedric. Hey, you said um, Rhonda, Delphine. It's a lot of you guys. Just wanted to just take a, a second and say hello. I do want to hear from you guys to see, you know, I love conversation. I'm not here to lecture. Um, but I do want to see where you guys are, what you think. How do you parent? How do you mentor? How do you coach? Are you an inspiration or are you a roadblock? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, get, give you some feedback from that side, yeah. right? Because we look at things from where we are. We look at things from what we've experienced, and it's completely different. It's completely different. And so having that insight from somebody that is at that age, right, is always better. It, it gives you a, a more of a perfect view from their lens, if you will, right? And so, what you saying, guys? Y'all so quiet. Y'all hanging out with us, but y'all so quiet. You're not saying anything. Yeah, I see. I'm sorry. I'm not giving Instagram any love. Hey, guys, I see y'all there too. Y'all names are so uh, different on Instagram. I can't figure some of them out. But hello, hello, hello. Thanks for joining us. Y'all have. I want to get some import import from you guys. If not, we'll keep chatting for a few minutes, and then we're gonna get off here because we gotta continue to get our uh, week our week together, get prepared for our week. And so Robin, she said, roadblock child one and two, inspiration child three and four. It made a difference in their outcome. Yeah, explain that a little bit more, Rob. I'd like to hear a little bit more about that. Where are you guys at in your relationships, right? Because even for us now, you know, although we are mother and son, it's a parent, you know, I'm his parent, it's also now a friendship, a relationship, right? And then sometimes even coaching, like I'll coach him and I'll even go to him to get his input on things that I'm doing or things that I'm thinking because he has great insight. He has great input, right? And so how, how are you guys doing with that? Do you feel like your children aren't your friend or you feel like you don't want to get on that level because they'll get off? Where are you guys at, you know, with regards to that in your own household or in your relationships? But I feel like it's important because you might love your parent, you might love your child because that's your child or your parent, but you might not like them. They have personalities just like your your friends have personalities or your cousins have personalities. I'm sure everyone doesn't like all their cousins. Mm -hmm. So a friendship is important with your parent. Like I said, it doesn't mean that you're buddy buddy with them and you know you you let them curse around you and you let them do whatever they want. And that that's not what it is. It's just having a great relationship where you guys can be open, you guys can converse, you guys can just have good conversation and be open versus you know a child being scared like oh you know i don't want to come to my mother and i don't want to come to my dad because i feel like they're going to do this i feel like they're going to 
want to overreact or whatever the case is. Yeah, that's good. And so Robin, she said she raised her first two kids by control and fear. And I think a lot of people do. Um, I think because you don't know, right? You go off of what you experienced with your with with what you experienced with your parents, how they parented you. And so as you go along, you learn. So I think a lot of people, you know, raise their kids off of um, some 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 people raise their kids off of control and fear. And I even, you know, go as far as to say that it goes back to slavery, like disciplining your kids, beating your kids, and calling it a form of discipline is it goes back to slavery. It's what the slave masters did when the slaves didn't do what they wanted them to do. They beat them. And so growing up in that and they're being passed down generation to generation to generation is followed over and over and over and over again. And that that's not that that's that's not the way to raise, right? That's not raising anybody. Beating them down is is not raising. So um, I, I totally agree with that. Hey, Bruce, I totally agree with, you know, people generally, if they don't know, if they haven't been exposed to better, they raise their kids by control and fear. Yep. That's how she kind of raised me with control and fear. And as I got older, I was like, I kind of wanted to shy away from her. Didn't want to, uh, didn't want to, I guess, be open or talk to her. Versus my daddy never really beat me. Never. Not saying that you should never beat your kids, but my daddy always had in depth, open conversations with me. If I did something wrong, why did you do this? Okay. Since you did that, this is why I was wrong. Versus I feel like sometimes with her, it was like, why did you do this? Sometimes I don't have an answer. Boom, beat him. So it was like like more control and fear. And as I got older, it wasn't like that as I got older. But when I was younger, that's how it was. When I was growing up, it was like, oh, I, I want to shy away from my scared. I'm scared to tell her something. I feel like she's going to overreact. She might get mad. And you don't want your kids to grow up and not like you. Yeah, because that's good. they're gonna have to take care of you like you took care of them once you get to a certain age. And you have some kids who are like, I'm not, I'm not doing like the way they treated me when I was young. I don't even want to be around them. And you have some kids or some children, they might be adults now in their twenties and thirties that don't have great relationships that don't like their mother or father, and you don't want that. Yeah. So Cedric says keeping the lines of communication open and creating the culture of trust is so key. Yeah. It really is. Like trust is so important it really is said so i totally 100 percent agree with that hey Ryle, so you just joined thanks for joining us so we're just here you know chatting about um being the change you want to see right leading how are you leading the next generation because more is caught than taught and Ra, i think you did an amazing job with raising Laura. Ra. He's doing some outstanding things. And again, that's as a result of not only what you've shown, not, a, not only what you've said to him, but what you've shown to him as well. So kudos to you, man. Your your presence, you know, in his life was it was just phenomenal consistently. So kudos to you, champ. I love it, love it, love it. So Robin says communication is very important. You have to allow your children to self-express even if you disagree. It, it establishes a high self-esteem. Absolutely, right? You, you, even if you disagree, and I think that goes back to trust, like Cedric was saying, um, even if you disagree, you still have a level of trust to know that it's not disrespectful. Right. It's just that you disagree, literally. If your kid is disciplined enough, they're not trying to disrespect you. They're just trying to express themselves. And when you cut them off or you feel like they've been disrespectful or you're, you're quick to hit them or quick to uh, correct them, whatever the case may be, it makes them not want to express themselves. And that can bleed or lead to not wanting to express themselves in uh, other relationships or friendships or romantic, whatever the case may be. So Yeah, 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 yeah. Good stuff. So... You are almost to graduation, a yeah. senior in college. How is that? Like, what does that feel like? It's, it's been a long journey. It's, it's been, been four years, y'all. He's talking about a long, a long journey. long journey as far as the school. And um, I'm honestly glad that it's coming to a close. Um, I'm glad that my mom has not in my life and just, just grow and mature. Um, but the, the journey, the, the actual the process of college, um, it was a great experience. Um, it definitely helped me mature, helped me grow. Um, I learned a lot socially. I don't feel like I learned that much as far as academically, like as, 
as far as what I'm doing in my field, I don't feel like actually the classes themselves helped me learn. It was more of just social and how, learning how to talk with people, learning how to communicate. Um, I've had different uh, talks or different, I've conversed with different people in the IT field who, who have been to college and they've said the same thing. Hey, I went to college and only about 10% of what I learned in college I actually used in the workforce. But not to say college is bad or college is horrible. Um, like I said, it was a great experience, but my experience, more, most of the positive came from the social aspect versus the academic aspect. So, but I'm happy to graduate. I graduated May. Can't yeah. wait. Woo, 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 woo. Oh, debt God. free. Don't let, don't, don't, don't let that slide out. Yeah, yeah debt man. free. It was so important for me, guys, that he not come out of college with debt. Like I just see so many people, I coach and mentor people now that have thousands of dollars in debt. I coach doctors, MDs, PhDs, and they are still paying debt from school. So it was so important for me, for him not to have debt, right? And so him going in, and this goes back to growing up. Like I didn't know about college funds growing up. I was a teen mom. I had him when I was 19, right? So I didn't know about those those things. I didn't have those things in place. But what I did was I had structure and strategy. And so I did. I wanted him to go to college debt free. So I began to put things in place. And so when he went to college each semester, to God be the glory, has been paid in cash. Right? Don't owe nobody. There's nobody coming for me and there'll be nobody coming for him. He coming out free reign and clear and will be able to live his life without something following him, right? So that's also setting a leveraging legacy, setting up generational wealth. He ain't coming out with no debt. He coming out scot-free. We had a conversation a couple months ago. I said, hey, listen, I want you to purchase. And he said, well, I'm not really sure if I'm going to stay in this area. But here's my thing. I don't want you to be paying somebody else mortgage. Pay your own. It's an investment. Make it, in, make it an investment, right? Because you can. You're 21 years old. You don't have any debt. They're waiting to give you a house. So take full advantage of the opportunities that are here. So I am super excited. I'm super happy that he's coming out without that stress. He's coming out of college without having to figure out or put it in his budget to pay for college. So many peers and colleagues who have that 20, 30, 40, 80, $90,000. Yes. And they're like, man, I'm, I'm going to be paying this one. I'm going to be paying this time to fix it. And I don't say this, but it's like, I can't relate. And of course, it's, it's to her to her uh, credit, she, she basically paid the first two and a half, three years of, of my college straight cash. And the first two years, I was living on campus. Yeah. So it was it was the tuition less room and board, room and board which yeah. is double basically. Right. Yeah. So um, like around my third year, I was fortunate enough to get an internship, a paid internship, mm -hmm. and I've been able to help pay for that, pay that tuition. Yes. Which which was a blessing. Definitely. Yeah. And yeah. um, so to continue going to school without having any debt. So. Yeah, that's, that's good stuff. That is good, good, good stuff. So again, guys, how are you leveraging legacy? How are you setting up the next generations? Right now, I'm working on my great, great grants. I want to get to 10 generations. So right now, I'm working on my great, great grants. How are you le leveraging legacy? How are you setting up generational wealth? Are you leaving a legacy of working hard for somebody else the rest of your life? Are you leaving a legacy of wealth? Just here recently, probably uh, three months ago, I completed my, my will. And in the will, guess what? He gets to choose to do what he wants with the business. How awesome is that? You can't leave your job to your kids. You can't leave these little, these little, <laughs> why are you laughing? You can't leave these little MLMs to your kids. Like literally, let's begin to leverage legacy, guys. What are we really doing? We're going to work for somebody. We think agreement the six figures that we've arrived you have not arrived yes six figures is cool it it, it it gave me a lifestyle that it wouldn't have i'm not shooting that down but what i am saying is that there's more there is more leverage legacy set up that generational wealth it's your responsibility to leave an inheritance for your kids kids i'm gonna say that again it's your responsibility to leave an inheritance 
for your kids' kids? Are you leaving an inheritance of wealth? Are you leaving an inheritance of, of, of debt? What are you leaving? What are you leaving? And like I said, I'm setting up for generations. I'm working on 10. Right now, I'm on my great, great, kid, great grandkids. I'm working on 10. I need them to be able to come and stand on the stumps and say to my grandmother, my great, 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 great grandmother, Natasha Mayo, paved the way. So things that she experienced, I'll never have to experience. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Do you have an exit strategy? Those of you guys that have been on your job 20, some of y'all 30 years, what's your exit strategy? And can you afford to retire or will you have to go get another job? I talk to so many people that retire and go get another job because the pension is not enough. I don't even understand that process of settling for a fixed income. Who told you that your income had to be fixed? From me seeing her, seeing her have conversations with other people, seeing how she walks, that I personally just don't want to have to work for someone for the rest of my life. Because, like she said, you cannot leave your kids with with your your hundred thousand dollar salary. You can't. You can't right. leave them that. Right. You're not even gonna get your hundred thousand right. your hundred thousand dollar salary. You can get eighty percent, maybe if you're doing good. Right. If 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 your retirement plan allows that, you maybe will get eighty percent of that six figure salary. That's just for you. But guess what? Even in that, retirement ain't going to your kids. If you don't outlive your retirement, it's going back to them. What are you setting up? What are you doing? How are you leveraging legacy? What does your general your generational wealth look like? And so Robin says, how long can you survive without a job? One week, 30 days, six months, one year? That's something to think about. It is. So what she's saying is, how long can you not have that direct deposit? without going crazy, without pulling your hair out. Because people max out. They're not living beneath their means. They're living above their means. So yes, maybe they're, they're, they're getting six figures, maybe multiple six figures. But because they max out, they have to live, they have to work on and on and on and on because they're maxed out, right? And so they can't, like Robin is saying, last one month two months, three months, let alone a year without that job. So we got to begin to do things different, guys. We got to set up some structure and some strategies and begin to shift the playing field. We've been so used to doing things the way our ancestors did, right? I remember growing up and my grandmother saying, girl, get you a good government job and work forever and ever and ever and live your life happily ever after. Who said that's happy, right? Because the people that I see that have retired aren't the happiest people, literally, right? And so two years ago, 2016, I actually walked into full-time entrepreneurship to God be the glory. Now, that's something I have always seen. That's something I had always visioned. This was my second time around. I did it before. But I walked into full-time entrepreneurship because I had structure and I had strategy. I didn't wake up and say, all right, this is it. I'm out of here. No, that's dumb. Don't do that. Don't go and just quit your job. No, you need to have structure and strategy. You need to have a plan in place. And I know some of you guys are saying, well, I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm not built like that. You are, and that's okay that you feel like you're not. But what I am saying is develop some other streams of income. Don't be stuck with one stream of income, a job. Because guess what? At any given time, they can say, we're downsizing. We can no longer afford your salary. We can no longer afford your position. And that's it. So what happens then? What happens then? The last three years working in corporate America, I didn't know when payday was. Why? Because I had additional streams working. That's the, that's the key word. You can have streams, but are they working? Are they streaming or they're just sitting there? No, I'm talking about streams working. I had additional streams working, but I wasn't focused on the direct deposit because I had other streams coming in. Uh, someone had 
having that much control over your life where they can just cut off your your, your, life, yes. your, your salary and that just changes your life completely. Yes. You really want someone to have that much control over your life. Yeah. And you can put that same energy you put in. That's it. That's it. And a lot of times people do that, right? They give all their brilliance away to somebody else because they don't want to bet on themselves. All bets was on me. I knew that I couldn't fail because all bets was on me. I'm not going to let myself fail. That's crazy. I was going to work giving my all to a job day in and day out. You mean to tell me I can't come out and give that to myself? I can't give that to my family, my children that are dependent on me? No, yes, I can. Yes, I can. And yes, you can. So it's all about you making a decision to change and not stay the same. Make the decision to change and not stay the same. We got two weeks left in 2018, and some of y'all checked out. We went to church today, and he said, the parking lot is empty. I said, you know, around this time of year, people just get relaxed. You ain't got time to chill. Like Cardi B says, I ain't got time to chill. I got to pay my mama's bills. I ain't got time to chill. I got a legacy to build. Stop chilling. You got two weeks left. Do something with that two weeks. And why am I hollering at the people? <laughs> I know I'm just so passionate about us, guys, because it's us that be chilling. It's us that just want something easy. It's us that don't want to do the work, but the first ones to blame the other folk. No, it's your fault. If you broke, if you live in paycheck to paycheck, it's your fault. Do something different. There you go. I love that. Type that in there, Robin. You are the enemy of your own progress. I love that. Good stuff. I'm talking about the devil doing something. The devil ain't even think about thinking about you. You did that. You did that. The devil was not omnipresent. I don't know how y'all say he's 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 walking around rampant. Tell he ain't omnipresent. He ain't God. Stop giving all this credit to the devil and look in yourself. Check yourself. I check myself on a daily basis, physically, financially, spiritually, emotionally. Why are you tripping out about that? Why you got an attitude about that? Check yourself, guys. Check yourself. Ross said, uh, D keeps fading in and out with the sound. Probably because you. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, cuz. Yeah. No, check yourself, guys. Check yourself. It's such a blessing for me to see that my life, the life that I live, not the life that I say, but the life that I live has blessed him and continues to bless him, right? Because he see, he seen that I have, he know he can. Last year when, when, when uh, he first started his internship, it's downtown DC, phenomenal opportunity. God is just amazing. He you know, had to drive in and he said, I don't know how you spent 20 years in traffic. Bama, <laughs> you've been working two days and talking about traffic. He was like, man, I'm not gonna be working for nobody for those 20 years, but that just blessed my soul to know at 19, 20 years old, he already see. I'm not giving my brilliance away for free forever and ever. Amen. Now, there are some benefits to working. He's been working since he was, what, 14? 14, right? And worked for Target. Was there five years, four years. And then, you know, transitioned on. So he's been working, and there are benefits to working. Don't get it twisted, right? The, the, the benefits of working is to help you develop in areas that you're weak at, right? I'm able to run my business the way I do as a direct result of what I learned in corporate America. Don't get it twisted. Corporate America has its benefits. It has been great. It has been a great dream funded for me to walk right into my destiny, literally. I am living my best life now. Now listen, better is always available. I don't ever settle, but I own my time. I ain't got to ask nobody, can I be all? I ain't got to ask nobody for vacation. I own my time. I own my time, guys. And as a result of me owning my time, he knows that one day he can own his and he's looking 
forward to it. And guess what? Not just looking forward to it. He's tapping into other things. He's asking God. We had a conversation a couple months ago about, you know, what are, what are your plans? What are you doing? Because you just can't have a, a big old plan and you ain't doing nothing. Faith without works is dead. Ask God, God, what is my brilliance? What are the areas that I need to tap into right now? And so he's beginning to do that and he's tapping into other areas right now. He's starting to, to produce. Now his father is a musician, has always been a full-time entrepreneur and he never had any desire for it. No desire for the music. But now, now that he's tapped into the other, the, the other uh, uh, brilliance that's on the inside of him, God is now just bringing it up. And it's like, it, it, it's like easy almost, yeah. almost right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like he's picking up, like he can hear something and play it. Now he ain't played all his life, 21 years. He's making beats that people are paying him for already. But it was as a result of him asking, God, what is it? What else am I supposed to do? Yeah. Right. And that's just one because those are the beginning stages. A lot of times God will give you things where you are. It's so much more, but it's building blocks that you got to do. Like for me, mine started out with fitness, right? And so in going through that process of losing uh losing the weight and healing from within god began to show me other areas that i that i was supposed to tap into that's where the business coaching came from that's where the mindset coaching came from that's where execution came from as a result of the foundation of me starting in fitness so you got to start somewhere i tell people this don't despise the rise right don't despise the rise don't think that Oh, this isn't going to not that this isn't going to uh, grow into anything because it is. It's the building block. It's the foundations. You got to go in order to grow. Thinking about it up here, you'll never get there. You got to go in order to grow. He said he still can't hear you. He said you got to scream okay. like your mama. <laughs> oh, that is funny. Can y'all hear Demarge? We're getting ready to wrap up, guys. We got about three more minutes, and we're going to let you guys go. But I'm, I appreciate you guys hanging out with us. It's, it was just did my heart well for him, one, to want to hang out with me. Some of y'all kids don't want to hang out with you. They running from you, right? So it just did my heart well for him to even want to hang out, you know, with me and, you know, share. I write about him a lot on Facebook. So here you guys have the opportunity to see him in the flesh and, um, and experience his brilliance. That's another thing, guys. Tell your kids that they are brilliant. A brilliant. Help them develop, you know, who they are because you are the first person that imparts in their life. What are you imparting? Is it positive or negative? Are you calling them dumb, stupid, blankety blank, blank, blanks? What are you doing? Like words are important. I've always instilled in them that you're great. And don't nobody do what you do like you do. So what are you imparting in, in your kids? Oh, um, Sax says she can't hear you either. That's so weird. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Y'all got any questions, anything y'all want to share? I'm always open because I believe the better is always available. He's 21. If any of you guys got children that are older, I am definitely open to your um, suggestions on how you continue to transition and help them develop to be the best version of themselves. Let us know. Hey, Facebook, y'all still, I mean, I'm sorry, Instagram, y'all still hanging out with us. Hey, 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 hey. Let us know, guys. We want to hear from y'all before we exit out. You got anything else you want to share before we let these great people go for tonight? One minute, guys, counting down. Thanks so much. Hello, Jill, Marcia, Sandra, Etna. James, Sequoy, Chanel, hello, hello, hello. Thanks for joining, guys. Well, if you guys don't have anything else for us, hey, Tashika, I see you just joined. 
Um, if you guys don't have anything for else for us, we are going to let you go. If you're just joining, go back and listen to the replay. Um, it's some great nuggets, some great life applications, some great action items that you can do today, right? Stop waiting. We got two weeks left in 2018. Stop waiting, talking about you preparing for 2019. 2019 will prepare itself. Trust me. If you already got things in, in the pipe, it's just going to flow. I'm going to say that again. If you already got things in the pipe, it's just going to flow into 2019. Stop breaking. You ain't got time to chill. Literally, you don't. You behind. So stop chilling. Take these last two weeks by force and do something with them. Do something amazing. Do something great. Don't just let two weeks go talking about, oh, it's the holiday. You ain't got time to be on nobody's holiday. Literally. Let's go, guys. Let's do things different starting now. We're still in the fourth quarter. You know the championships that have been won in the fourth quarter? The buzzer beaters? Come on. I'm a buzzer beater, right? I don't care what it looked like. I'm going to the end. I ain't ever sitting down. I'm winning, guys, and I want you guys to win too in every area of your life. Win. Don't live, don't live beneath your birthright. God created all of us, each and every last one of us to win. Those that don't is because they choose to. So win, guys. Have an amazing day. Command your day tonight. Stop waiting for the next day to come for you to command your day. If you're not commanding your day, start today. Command your day at night. Tell your day what you want it to be so that it rise to you and you not rise to it. Command your day tonight, and I guarantee you it will be different. All right? All right, guys. It's been absolutely amazing. I look forward to talking with you guys soon. I will be back on here Wednesday at 11 a.m. So go ahead and put it in your calendar and jump in here with me. If this message blessed you, I need you to share it. There's somebody out there that needs to hear what we've shared. And so I want you to share it with you. There are people that we don't know that you know that will be blessed by this message. So please, please, please share it and uh, check us out. Check me out rather. He won't be here, but check me out. Hang out with me on uh, Wednesday at 11 a.m. Good night. Sweet sleep in Jesus' name. Peace. You want to tell the people that? Mm. <laughs>